Hey guys, it's Drak, and I was so tired of Raven commissions that I took on a really neat one, and this should be an exciting commission. The commission is to overhaul an AT3K or an AirTech 3000 into a sweet NIC blaster. You can see that this one is still fully stock and fully functional. It has the old power gauge, and it's rotating on the first prime. If you're curious about AirTech 3000s and you want to see a review of one in its vintage form completely stock, be sure to check out my vintage review on the AT3K. Whoops, and I'll put a link to that there, but I'm gonna go break this thing down and I'll show you what we're working with as we move along. So once you butterfly open your AT3K, it's pretty easy to see how it works. The pump comes back and on the first pump it depresses this, which rotates the turret. Every subsequent pump it misses and doesn't do anything. Then releasing the air lets this tank's pressurized air out through the turret and fires and everything's kind of trying to come apart so for this mod we have been requested to make a black blue and gold blaster so I've kind of already got an idea of how I want to paint it up and fortunately we started with a silver 3k which means that we have blue and blue pieces already that will not need to be painted so that is really really convenient we will have to paint a couple of pieces and we definitely want to remove the liquitron gauge from the system we want to leave it for aesthetics but we don't want it to be doing anything in terms of taking up our pressure from our performance so I'm going to cut it out and bridge this connection so that it's very smooth and there's less travel distance for the pressure to get into the tank. And then we're going to plug the pump and we'll get to work. So for the new turret for this blaster, we're going to be using this. This is half inch PETG, which is just a very lightweight plastic barreling material. And it has great air gun fit, which means that the darts kind of loose inside, which lets them travel and accelerate very quickly after a short burst of air is delivered. And just to demonstrate that, this is why a lot of HVZers use this material as blowgun material, because you can get some pretty insane power just using your lungs. So this should be much nicer because a mechanical valve snaps faster than human lungs and the air will be drier so it won't build up condensation to slow the darts down. So at this point, there are multiple things to talk about. Number one, the commissioner has requested a stock for this blaster. He wants specifically, I think, a stockade stock. So I took off an old Praxis in strike kind of stock mounting attachment and I've two part epoxied that on the outside, clamped it, then came inside and resin filled the inner lip by putting it first inside and then tilting it this way to cure so that it kind of ran into that groove. In addition, a lot of the sanding and prep work for the shell has been done. It still needs to be washed, but I was waiting for this to cure for 48 hours before I went and washed it. So that's ready to be washed and then I can put on a base coat of paint more importantly, over here we have the turret assembly, which is much heavier now, but it does have PETG barrels installed. They've been taped down because I'm using the original piece in here and it's still kind of free floating. I need to epoxy that down. But these have been two part epoxied into place. They have tightening rings inside so that a dart that's ramrodded in here will stay and then I'm going to lock this down with two-part epoxy and put a better wrap around the front barrel and then if you're wondering this looks really rough because I did just literally tear the turret apart with <laughs> these pliers actually and then I'm going to come in and do a wrap on the back so that this will be clean neon orange clean neon orange and the barrels are all straight and more or less of even length you can see that there might be a few millimeters difference there but it's nothing too extreme and then down here I coupled the two pieces of tubing together and then I gooped over the coupler which is a really tight friction fit to begin with but then I gooped over it and then I've wrapped it in neon green duct tape which I just melted in each of the three joint areas so this should be a very very solid joint and it's getting really good air delivery through to the tank so everything should be more or less ready I just need to finish up with the turret and then paint the shell just a quick look at these internals for this commission. The one thing that you will note is that the auto-rotating mechanism is gone. That's because there wasn't enough 
torque on it to actually turn the new barrel system because the new barrel system is much heavier than the original one. So other than that, we've done a little bit of grease and then some craft foam to improve the turret seal. Everything else is more or less how you would expect from previous sections. This has been made a much sharper valve opening mechanism and then this no longer does anything. It's purely cosmetic. So we have an inline air system that's relatively efficient. It's longer than I'd like, but that's kind of the name of the game with this shell. Now, all of that said and done, it is ready to be put back together, detailed, named, and shipped off. Alright guys, so this is it. It is a finished AirTech 3000, completely overhauled, new pet G barrels, fires, elite darts, and you can see there is one southeast style slug down in there to kind of just prove that point. Then everything else has been painted and done up, stock attachment point, and in this case a custom painted stockade stock to match. I went light on the detailing because I really like just how cool the blaster is without too much detailing. The gold accents the black very nicely. The Dracula Lena came in and did purple enamel in certain places. So there's purple enamel here, here, on each one of these little ridges. Hopefully it shows up better on video than I can see it myself. There's purple up here, and it's been signed in a couple of places, as well as over here we have Drac, and then this kind of purplish blue fluid, and then the back tank really kind of brings the whole thing together, I think, and looks really neat. It kind of reminds me of like a Zydrate gun or something. The commission wanted a very powerful performance style blaster, so I recommend only three pumps with this blaster, but it's firing easily over a hundred feet more with the slugs than the stock darts, and they're just moving very, very fast, and that's the power of air blasters. You pay for it with your rate of fire. Ah, oh, man, that one wasn't even lined up and still fired, so let's line up the slug, and this is going to be gone. And there's not much more to say about it than that. That's just pure power. It's a very nice blaster. It's a very nice base. And it's got that really sleek kind of design that the AirTech line had. And I like it. It's got a very sci-fi feel to it. It's very cool. So I'm going to get this mailed out very, very soon. But that is this modified commission. I can make just about anything. So if you have a commissioned blaster that you would like me to make with the holiday season coming up, I get out of university about midway through December. Then I have a trip up to Ohio for a Nerf war planned. But past that, I am wide open. So go ahead and commission me. I love making making blasters for other people. It's just a ton of fun. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this. I don't do a lot of air blasters.